Hey geeks, it's Andrea. Has anyone told you today how amazing you are? You keep your chin up out there and don't forget that you are wonderful. Anyway, today we're going to do something that we have only done one time before. We're going to take a look at a game for every letter of the alphabet. Don't you worry though, we're also going to include a number in there so those number games don't feel left out. And I'm also specifically picking mostly lesser known games, so hopefully there will be some new things for you to play mixed in here. I know times are weird in the world right now, so new games are surely welcomed. Alright geeks, let's go! 60 seconds series. Let's kick things off by trying to survive in a fallout shelter. I just realized that this might be a little insensitive with people being isolated and all that, but yeah. You have 60 seconds to grab as many supplies as you can, as well as your family, and make it down yourself. You use the items that you were able to salvage in your limited time to eat, drink, and defend yourself day to day. If you fail, don't feel too bad. You just start over and do it again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Aegis Defenders. I know what some of you are thinking. And yes, I did Google how to say that. Mm-hmm. Aegis Defenders has a very classic feel to it. The art style and side-scrolling platformer gameplay is enjoyable, and it tells a story while you battle your way through. In addition to the side-scrolling platformer, there are many fights that also add tower defense into the mix. If you like tower defense and platformers, it just might be the perfect game for you to check out. My last note is that I highly recommend a controller on this one. Bleed 2. I basically fell in love with this game the second I turned it on. Bleed 2 is an arcade style side scroller. I played it on a controller and initially the controls were a little weird to me personally, but it's just something to get used to. They are set up the way they are for a reason and it actually works very well. Using the upper right trigger for jump is personally just a hard thing for me to tell my brain to do. The music, style, and entire atmosphere has a very retro feel to it. If you like classic side scrollers, Bleed 2 should be high up on your list of games to check out. Cook Serve Delicious series. Excuse me while I take a moment to say that I love, 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 love this series. To be fair, cooking games in general bring me a lot of joy. While saying this, I can practically hear a few of my friends sniggering at this when they watch the video, and I hate you guys. I love you guys so much, but I hate you. You know, with love. With all that behind us, the controls may not be what you would expect in a cooking simulator style game, but it's less of a cooking simulator and more of a restaurant time slash customer management game. Going in at first, it might seem complicated, but when you get into it, it really is a lot of fun. Challenging once you get pretty far, at least for someone like me who needs perfect scores on everything. Devil Daggers. Okay, first of all, before going any further, the recording you are watching is my first time playing ever. It is okay to suck at first, right? At least I hope so. Devil Daggers is a simple game with one simple goal. Survive. Get the highest points you can, but ultimately just survive. It's straightforward and a lot of fun. If you're looking for something to just kill some time, this is a good option if you can handle a little frustration. It's also a very low priced game, so if you're on a budget, it's a good addition to your Steam library. Plus, it always feels good to support smaller devs. Emily is Away series. Here is a game that you can start playing the first in the series for free. It's a game based on a simpler time, at least for some of us because we were young as hell and still a bit stupid because of it, or still are in some cases. The days of AOL Instant Messenger. AIM was like Discord. Pretty much everyone had it. You would meet all kinds of people on it. I remember being a small child and using AIM. Those were the days. The creepy and terrifying days. Anyway, Emily is Away is a kind of like a choose your own path adventure book. It has super classic sounds and just has an interesting feeling to it. There are both happy paths and sad paths that you can take. Once you beat the first one, there is a second for only $5. There is a new one coming out sometime in the near future that will undeniably be as good as the other two. Freaking meat bags. Okay, this one is a bit harder to explain than most. It really combines two kinds of games. Mainly, it feels like an RTS, but it is also leaning towards tower defense. There really are some interesting concepts here. For example, you can take two humans and merge the DNA of the pair. Then you can create a new one based off of the stats that you want from them. It is definitely an interesting game. If you like RTS, I'm sure you will find hours of fun here. Grow up slash grow home. 
I love this series so much. I remember getting Grow Home in a PlayStation Plus package back in the day and just beating it 100% in one sitting. Good times. Both of the games have been released on Steam and getting the chance to play as Bud again is definitely not an opportunity I would want to miss. If you are a completionist in games like myself, you will love being able to find all the specific items to scan, as well as other things you'll collect along the way. Hand of Fate Hand of Fate is a card game like no other. One thing that makes the game unique is how fighting happens in the game. Most card games, it's higher damage card wins, or who isn't countered, or something like that. In order to win a hand in Hand of Fate, you have to actually fight. What you fight depends on what you draw. What you fight with, gear-wise, is similar. It's a very unique take on a card game and can easily keep you entertained for hours. There's also a sequel that came out Holy crap, over two years ago now? We are all going to be old and gray before we know it. Immortal Red Net. While doing research for this video, I came across this little gem. The name immediately caught my attention, so of course I had to check it out. When I had previously made an ABC of Games video, there was a game called Ziggurat on the list. That is easily one of my favorite games, and Immortal Redneck is so reminiscent of that. It just brings so much joy to my heart to play. This game gets a huge check in the love, 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 love box from me. Jazz Punk. If you want a game that offers a fun and unique storyline that is anything but serious, then Jazz Punk is definitely for you. It rides that perfect balance of being long enough to feel worth the money, but not too long to where you will never complete it. I will admit that this game does give me personally a little bit of motion sickness if I play it for too long, but that's just a me thing. I wouldn't let that deter you. It's just something of note if it's an issue you also get with some more simple graphic games. Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes is a very unique game to be on this list. One person stares at the screen or plays the actual game, while all other people you're playing with will look at a manual to defuse the boom boom. Anyone looking through the manual should never see the person defusing the bomb screen, and the diffuser should never see the manual. You operate strictly on communication and finding the answers to the puzzles. It's a little challenging at first while you're learning to communicate with each other as fast as possible, but once you get into it, you will have crazy amounts of fun with your friends. And hey, only one person has to own a copy. Always a plus. Long live the queen. Here's a way to see how you would survive as a 14 year old girl who just so happens to be the queen. You have to decide what you're going to study and what to do for your country. Your decisions will change the way your story plays out and there are many possible endings to unlock. So now you have to question yourself. How successful would you be as a 14 year old girl ruling over a country? Max and the Magic Marker. This is quite possibly one of the earliest games I remember getting on Steam, possibly even as part of my first Steam sale, but it's hard to remember that far back. It's a pretty straightforward game. You play as Max, he has this magic marker. You use that magic marker to solve puzzles and make your way through the world. Night Sky. Night Sky is Nicholas's take on the 2D limbo-like atmosphere. It's a puzzler where you roll around a ball through these dark two-dimensional scenes to see yourself to the end. If you're looking for something relaxing to do this afternoon, this could be a good option to check out. Outland. When I was looking through titles on my Steam library that start with O, I was immediately attracted to the vibrant colors of Outland. After giving it a try, I'm really impressed. It's a nice, simple, two-dimensional platformer. I don't really have any complaints here. I did notice when looking at it on the Steam store, apparently you can't find it in search. Don't worry though, you should still be able to pick it up if it's something you're interested in. I always provide links to all the games in my videos, so you can still get there through the link listed below. Boy. Every time I do these videos, I find a few games that I just fall so much in love with. That is what Poi instantly became to me. It is a 3D platformer that just puts a smile on my face. It checks all the boxes for a nice platformer to me. I love the art style, it has completionist elements, it is a stable build, the controls are natural feeling, and the list goes on and on. Poi is the platformer I didn't realize that I was missing from my life until I played it. Cube 2. If I had to simplify the Cube series as much as possible, I would say that it's kind of like an indie version of Portal, at least gameplay wise. It's a three dimensional puzzle platformer that has some similar characteristics. There is of course a first game to the series, but for some reason it isn't in the Steam store at all. 
so I'm not really sure where you would pick it up. Honestly though, 2 is an amazing game and just completely different from 1. You will not miss the original if you jump right into 2. Don't get me wrong, the first one was fine in its own right, but 2 is just so much of an improvement that it's just impossible to compare the two. Reigns. Reigns is a great example of a nice simple concept and a perfectly simple execution. With your wit and a little help from the RNG gods, you try to do your best to reign over your kingdom as long as you can, doing your best to keep your funds, military, churches, and people happy. When you fail, don't worry. Your heir will take over and you start the game all over again. Very straightforward, simple, and crazy fun. Sanctum series. If you love tower defense games and first person shooters, Sanctum is a game that I cannot recommend enough. I know there is an amazing second one, but the first one holds such a special place in my heart. The blank maps are my favorite because I love to just see how long I can survive on my building and shooting alone. God, I forgot how much I love this game. I think I'm about to spend a day playing this again. A wonderful thing about this tower defense game is that you can play with your friends. Always a huge bonus. So work together and take down those weird creatures. Don't let them infiltrate. Throne of Lies. Who doesn't love a game of deceit? Well, I mean, there is a game that you do just that that's called deceit, but uh... Okay, let's start again. Who doesn't love a game where you have to figure out who's lying? Or maybe you are the one lying yourself to get away with being a sneaky little guy. Of course, there is always Town of Salem available, but I don't feel like you should compare the games so much. They play out quite differently. Throne of Lies, in my opinion, is a lot more complicated and has a lot more moving parts. There are dozens of roles to play. Just starting out, it can seem very intimidating. If you like games like Town of Salem, it's definitely worth picking up. Ultimate Chicken Horse. If you host party game nights in your friends group, this is one that I highly recommend adding. At least when you just don't have enough people to fill a Jackbox lobby. You can only play with four people max, which actually is kind of a good thing. I cannot imagine eight people in an Ultimate Chicken Horse lobby. That sounds like a mess. Anyway, get up to three of your friends with you and try to prevent your friends from making it to the end of the level while simultaneously making it to the end yourself because you are clearly the superior platform gamer. Pretty straightforward. If you get the right group together, you will have an amazing time. Viscera cleanup detail. Chances are you haven't been around since the beginning of this channel, so you probably don't know my love affair with this game. I think I've had it in three or four videos at this point. Maybe? I don't even know anymore. Anyway, Viscera Cleanup Detail has been one of those games that I have regularly come back to when I want to relax. Some people wash their dishes, scrub their floors, maybe even do a bit of vacuuming. For me, to relax after doing those chores that I hate so much, I clean the remains of whatever happened to these poor soulless bastards using my trusty mouse and keyboard. Oh, also there is co-op available. Wander Song. I have a plethora of games that I consider cute and feel are also quality games that everyone should play. Wander Song is one that I would easily put on that list. You play as an adorable bard with a huge heart. The character is so likable that you want to keep playing and the story is so fun and easy to see through the end. Exotic. Okay, so I know this was on the list the last time I did this, but I feel like it's just an underappreciated game, simply because it's fairly unknown. If you get the chance to check it out, I 100% recommend it. Each level has different versions, such as time mode. Hey, whoever is the face behind WXP Games, can you please make a sequel? Hey, thanks. Yoku's Island Express. Yoku's Island Express is a platformer that surprised me. I didn't really expect to like it quite as much as I did. The controls were a little weird for me at first, but they're honestly not bad. It's platforming meets pinball, and I'm actually kind of loving it. It's a very unique game and definitely worth giving a chance. Zombie Night Terror. If you've ever had the urge to inflict humans with an undead taste for brains, Zombie Night Terror is the game for you. Your goal is to turn every human in each scene into a mindless zombie. It's a cute, fun little puzzler that includes bonus objectives to make things a little more challenging for yourself. Alright geeks, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this adventure into some games and hopefully you found some that you've never heard of and want to give a try. I know I've been a little MIA over the last couple years. Life has a way of getting in the way of what you enjoy doing sometimes, doesn't it? I promise I'm going to be a lot more active. Honestly, regardless of the amount of people watching, making videos makes me happy. So it feels like a good time to get back into it. As long as my PC holds together at least. Before you geeks go, do me a favor and subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below. If you want to support the channel, check out the selected t-shirt here or you can see more at the shop. 
All right, geeks. I'll see you next time.